praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We will continue tonight as we had started with part three of living in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is part three, and this should end us up tonight. And uh, if if we were in an open classroom and you say, are there any questions? And since we are not, I'll just give us a little quick uh, review from what we've talked about again uh, during the course of the week. Uh, we talked about uh, the background of this being the Holy Spirit. We're speaking of the third person in the body of the triune or the uh, Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're saying that when this is at the time that and when we were in John last night, we were reading from John's scripture, and last night we were saying that this was at the time of, of Jesus Christ, our Savior, having died and buried and resurrected and was walking on the earth among his disciples. And he was reassuring them as they were feeling that they were going to be abandoned since this was just prior to his ascending into heaven to be with his heavenly father in the form of God and he being God himself and would be sitting at the right hand in, in the special seat of righteousness reserved for him and him only. So tonight we'll be starting uh, off with enabling the power to do the ministry of Christ Jesus. We had touched on that a little bit last night by saying that all of us are ministers. All of us are ministers of the Holy Spirit and that all of us have a work to do. It is God's Holy Spirit which is enabling us to speak to and act wisely and do the right thing. It's that unction we said that's down in us when we're about to do something that's not quite in the godly manner. And we get that feeling and we say, something told me or I had a feeling that. But that is the Holy Spirit that's talking with us. Apart from our daily walk and witness, we are empowered by, empowered by the Holy Spirit to engage powerfully and enthusiastically. He doesn't want us to come with a down, hung down head and a, and, and a desire uh, as if it's being done out of pressure. But we are to come enthusiastically and engage powerfully and enthusiastically in the specific ministry that God has given us. Remember last night we read uh, from the New Testament where Jesus had gone into the synagogue on that Sabbath day and even the spirit will come, had come upon Jesus Christ. And this is what he was saying that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's Jesus speaking. And he spoke and quoted from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, which had spoke of him in prophecy about 2,000 years before, saying, because he was anointed, uh, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, and we said last night that he closed the book because the acceptable year of the Lord had not arrived yet because he is the acceptable year of the Lord, being, meaning that he was going to come back when he comes back in his second coming, not as the baby, but as the uh, one coming back to put his kingdom here on earth in the new Jerusalem. And Jesus at that time made it very clear that the Spirit was upon him to anoint him for the specific ministry and to lay ahead for him. The, uh, the ministry had been set up for him for what he was to do. And this, this, uh, ver these verses here says that, that, that his destiny had already been set up, had been set up by God and that he was here now, and he's here to fulfill it because he's here on earth. And he also, we also know that in addition to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, prior to Jesus' um, Jesus coming into his ministry, he experienced the wilderness experience. He was living and working in Nazareth, and then John the Baptist baptized him, and what? The Spirit of God came upon him. He was, uh, as he uh, ascended up out of the water, the Spirit of God ascended upon him in the form of a dove. 
And he was led by the Spirit, as we said, into the wilderness, but he was also strengthened by the Spirit, although he was led there. And as he defeated, defeated the devil's temptations, and then he returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. So three times the Spirit has done something. He has, he has, um, he has anointed him when he came up out of the water. He went to the wilderness with him or took him out there, kept him strengthened and nourished. And then he brought him back in the in his power, the power of the of the spirit, and then his fullness of his ministry began. <clears throat> Excuse me, began. And uh, then a disciple in Damascus. Then we talk about Paul, or uh, who uh, at that time was named Saul. And Saul, uh, we think of him as also being one that had been overcome by the spirit, who had a, a divine encounter with the Lord while he was on his way to Damascus to persecute the Christians there. And that's in our the book of Acts when we start studying that. And Saul yielded himself to Christ's message and was led blind, blind. He struck him down on the Damascus road, and then he was led blind and trembling into Damascus, where he remained for three days. The similarity there. He was led into Damascus where he remained for three days when he came to himself or the Lord Jesus brought him back through Ananias. After three days, it was like a resurrection for him. Who else had been out of the circuit for three days and then resurrected and came into the ministry and of God, Jesus Christ himself? So these things that the Spirit does, the similarities seem to be that they wash off on each other. And then uh, when he came to himself there with Ananias, was uh, instructed by the Lord God to go to Saul. And Ananias laid hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is not a respecter of person. No little eyes and big, no little... Um, Big eyes and little U's. It's uh, the Holy Spirit was sent by the Jesus Christ for him to be in the embodiment of Saul, who was now Paul. And immediately, immediately, as we would say in Luke straightway, immediately Saul received his sight and was baptized. He received food and was strengthened, and he preached Christ in the synagogue that Christ is the son of God. After that experience, that Damascus Road experience, he preached Christ as the son of God. And prior to that, you, we all know that he was a zealot and he was there to get rid of all the Christians. But now he was a Christian, had become a believer in the Christian in himself. And as an evangelist, a boldly proclaiming Jesus as Christ, we said last night that we are all evangelists, that we, through the Holy Spirit, are spreading the word of God. We don't have to be a, a ordained ministers. We don't have to be a preacher in the church or a pastor, but spreading the word of God and knowing that God, Jesus, is the Son of God is what the goal is. And this is what Paul had done right here. So, and, of course, you know, this was the time when things were piling up against Jesus and getting ready for his crucifixion. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, who heard this, they were baffled and, and, and angry. They couldn't understand how could Paul be talking about that Jesus is the son of Christ when we sent him on a mission to do them in. And so they became so angry, in fact, that they sought to assassinate him. And what, they made, what made the difference in Paul's life, what made the difference? an indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that he experienced as a result of believing in Jesus Christ. Oftentimes when we say that we believe in Jesus Christ, particularly if it's in areas of the world or the country, for that matter, or in our city or state, when we claim that we believe in Jesus Christ, we immediately become the enemy of whomever is around when they are non-believers. So that's why we have to proclaim, proclaim Jesus Christ and be forever evangelizing and saying that he is the son of God, and not just the son of God, but the son of the living God. 
And what is true for Jesus and Paul in that day is also true for us. And one of the primary reasons the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit indwells in our life is so we can boldly and effectively do the ministry that God has called and prepared us to do. Remember at the crucifixion when um, the uh, the veil was rent and there was no longer a need for the priest to go into the innermost. The, we could come boldly to the to the to the throne of Christ and pray to Him and say to Him and ask of Him the things that we wanted to do. God not um, uh, is now indwelling in us and is and and doing the things that he intended for us to do as a part of our ministry and part of being part of the of the Holy Spirit. He intends for us to he intends to work through us to accomplish his purposes on earth. We're like a conduit. We're like the bridge. The bridge when you have a bridge going from one part of a uh, a mountain to the other and there's a gorge in the middle we are the bridge on earth here we are to uh, accomplishes the purposes of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that's indwelling in us. And it gives us that supernatural power. There's that word, supernatural power, in order to do a supernatural work. He gives it to us, his divine energy, his divine authority, so that we may participate fully and select successfully in his divine plan. Did I say divine? Yes, divine meaning it's all about Christ. Uh, I'm experiencing a storm where I am. If we lose co uh, connection, that may be what's causing uh, some of this popping noise. I do apologize. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. His divine energy and his divine authority so that he can participate fully and success successfully in his God's design plan. But you may be saying, I'm not called to be a pastor. I'm not called to be an evangelist. I'm just a plain old me, Carol, wretched woman that I am down here. But you are called to some form of ministry. You are called. And God gives one a more spiritual gift. When you are called to your particular ministry, through God, with the Holy Spirit, you are given a particular spiritual gift. And to those, to uh, us who believe in Christ Jesus, Jesus as our Savior, Jesus as the Son of God. So we sometimes, you'll hear in some churches, as being the ministry gift, our ministry gift. But often the most common that we hear is called uh, spiritual gift. If we look in Romans 12, Romans 12 for your notes. If you look at Romans 12, um, it lists these gifts. And they are having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us, let us use them. Don't have that gift now and not use it. Let us use them. If we have the gift of prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. And let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts or exalts and lifts up others, encourages others, we need to use that gift. And he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness should use those gifts. They live in us. They're in there. They just lie dormant or sleeping, and we have to Awake, 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 and lift up and get our spiritual gifts moving and going out there. What good are they to have? And the Holy Spirit has been dwelled in us, and then we sit on it. We've got to move it out. We've got to share it. We've got to give it, impart it, whatever words you wish to use. But do not sit on those gifts. These gifts are residents in us, and they don't leave us. Although they might, as I said, lie dormant in us. And as we develop and use our gifts, we grow in our ability to help others. When you're praying for someone who's going through, have you not felt the fact that those prayers reverberate and come back to you and make you feel like you've done something? It, it lifts your spirit up. Uh, something touches on you as you're doing this for someone. And as we help others 
by using our God imparted gifts, we fulfill our purpose on earth. That's our purpose. That's what we're here for. He's given us a ministry in us. And as we fulfill God's purpose for us, we experience a twofold reward. And those being we are effective witnesses for the gospel of Jesus Christ, which bears great heavenly reward. We are, this land down here is not our home. We're just passing through. We're preparing and, and getting in preparation for our heavenly reward, the one in heaven. And we experience a great deal of personal satisfaction and joy. I said that word joy, not happiness. There is definitely a difference. And happiness is something that's fleeting. It comes to you in the moment and then it's gone. But that joy, that joy is deep down in your soul, all the way down in there. And that's the joy, which is our earthly reward. The joy is our earthly reward. And we're passing through here on our way to heaven for our heavenly reward. And our response to the Holy Spirit power in us is that once you have believed in Jesus Christ and received the Holy Spirit, you can never, never, never again say, I can't do that. When someone is asking you, you say, oh, that's not my gift. I can't do that. But when you have received the Holy Spirit, when God calls you to do something, you're going to say yes. Yes, we can. Yes, I can. In every situation, you might otherwise say, no, I can't. But the Holy Spirit is indwelling in us now, empowering in us, giving us his strength that has been given to us through Jesus Christ from God. So we can do anything. Don't you remember that scripture in the Bible? What? I can do all things, all things, who Christ, who strengthens me, Philippians. And look in there and put that on your head, mold it into your mind, and just, just do like you're doing when the cowboys on the old cowboy pictures used to be uh, branding cattle. And they turn that cattle up and put that hot iron on them. That's that, that emblem will be on there. So that's what you want to brand into your brain, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, which is final, the final end of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit giving you that strength. There is only one option left to the believer, which is us, when God calls us to say or to do something. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and then that one answer, that one thing, what is it? We've been studying it through all our Bible studies here at St. Peter. Is once he gives it to us, we are to be obedient. Obedience, that's the key. There's only one right response when God calls. Obedience. And that is to say, yes. What happened in the first, uh, first uh, chapters of Isaiah when Isaiah was getting his marching orders from God as to what he was to do. He, after he had spoken all these things and said what was needed and what was to come, he said, but who will we send? Who will go for us? And what did Isaiah say? Here am I, or here I am, as we want to put it in contemporary, here am I, send me. You hear our deacons all the time speaking on this as they give us uh, instructions through their words by their actions, their actions. God has called them to and ordained them to be deacons, and they've come forth. That's the yes. And then after they came forth, the obedience that they do by the things we see them doing right now as we are closed down for this pandemic, that is obedience. And you may be thinking, but I'm, I'm not adequate. I'm not worthy. Well, friend, listen to me. Listen. Read my lips. None of us is adequate in our own strength and wisdom. But in Jesus Christ, all of us are made adequate by the Holy Spirit. And anytime you are feeling inadequate, there are three things you should do. Pen and paper for those of you taking notes. First, you recognize your need for the Lord. You recognize your need for the Lord. Admit to the Lord that you need his help, his wisdom, his strength, his power his resources and his protection and his provision. You do that first and foremost. And then you come, secondly, you rely upon him. 
You got to reach out and touch. Lean on me. Lean on me when you're whatever the song says, but you know you he's going to help you carry on. And you got to learn to rely and to lean on him and that God to be faithful to his word that he will never, never leave you nor forsake you. And he will provide fully for all things that he calls us to do. There's a sign that used to be on the church up here on uh, 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 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. It says, if God brought you to it, he will get you through it. And that is so appropriate for this time. He will provide fully for all things that he calls you to do. He will do and be in us everything we need for him, for us to be, to do. He will provide it for us. He'll give it to us. And thirdly, take a step in faith. You've heard the preachers say, step out on faith. Lean on Jesus. So now take a step in faith to act upon what he has called you to do. Nobody can steer or guide a parked car to light in the right direction or the right position if they don't step on the accelerator. If you don't step on the gas and you're hoping it's going to move, it's not going to move. you got to give it some fuel. So step out in faith. And like, just like the car begins to move, that car can be maneuvered. So in a like manner, God guides and directs us as we move and toward the goal he has set before us. God sets the goal. We may feel that we have all this goal setting and these plans and all these things we're doing nowadays, but this is not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about the Holy Spirit working in us. None of us can do the ministry that God gives us on our own. That's the part of God's plan. We must have his Holy Spirit at work in us. And why did God send the Holy Spirit? We said several different things and several times tonight and last night. But the Holy Spirit was sent to enable us to be Christ and Jesus, Christ and God's witnesses, mainly witnesses for Christ as the gospel. And what is the gospel? The good news. We are here to be witnesses, just like the band of witnesses in Revelation, and we're witnesses wherever, and the, uh, <clears throat> the witnessing that we do now from our St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church on every opportunity. We have that food bank that's on Tuesdays, and if I'm on the wrong day, I apologize. But we have that food bank, and the witnessing goes forth by our own deacons, Jordan, who, who witnesses to the people as they come in to pick up their bags. They don't just hand them a bag and tell them go home and eat. They tell them about the word of God. They it, give them their encounters. They give their personal, personal, uh, personal witnessing about what has happened to them. And then you've got praying John Thomas, Deacon John Thomas, please excuse me for being irreverent, but Deacon John Thomas. Um, and he comes right in as well and he prays and, and witnesses with them. And the people go out full, not just full with the food that's in that bag. They go out full of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So it is our duty. It's our innate duty from God that we must be witnesses for him. The Holy Spirit gives us the wisdom. He gives us strength and comfort and power to act and to speak in a way that reflects upon Jesus Christ as the third person in the Trinity now. The Holy Spirit is not the whole thing. It's what did I just say? He gives us power to act and speak in a way that reflects Jesus Christ. Everything that's done by the Holy Spirit and everything that's done by us should be a reflection of Jesus Christ. He is to get the credit as God, the living God. And the second one is to enable us to do his supernatural work. Supernatural. He does things that are seemingly impossible. He makes it possible. We can't do that. We don't have that kind of power. The Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit is the strength, power, and wisdom to become active in our God ordained. There's that word again, ordained, and it is ordained by God. These things that we have in us as active in our ordained service to others. Others, not ourselves, but to others, 
in American black history, there is a poem that says others. And we, we get that along with God's word, of course, and learn that poem, not for ourselves, but for others. Then we will know why we are here on earth, not to grapple and grab what we can get and run, but to help others, to look back and see your brother and give him a helping hand. The Holy Spirit enables us to accomplish what we were designed for from our birth. From our birth, we are preordained for certain things to be done in our lifetime while we are there, while we are here on earth, and designated since our spiritual rebirth. When we receive Jesus Christ in our heart and the Holy Spirit comes to live in us, this is called a spiritual rebirth. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, all of you that are here gathered tonight in the sound of my voice, remember that we don't worship just one. We worship the three as one, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is that which indwells in us as soon as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord. We need to hold on to that. We need to chew on it. We need to let the saliva in our mouth help digest it, swallow it down, let it go through the esophagus, into the stomach, and into the all corpuscles and everything else of our body so that we can absorb that and never, ever forget where we got that strength from. And I thank you for this time tonight. We're right on time. And hopefully we will have Pastor back tomorrow. But if he doesn't, one of his de- one of his dedicated ministers will be here to keep the ball rolling. And we thank everyone that participated tonight. And as Pastor would do, we can um, unmute the people on the phone line. And we're going to pray and we're going to acknowledge that we have uh, Minister Africa McClady, Mother Etheridge, Deacon and Deaconess Thomas, Ms. Roxanne, and Deacon Edwards on the Zoom. And we are eternally grateful for all the support that we get for this ministry and our pastor. And for the members, the members, the ones that sit on the pews as well, we thank you all. Let us pray. Uh, can you hear me now? I just had a big bolt of lightning or something. But anyway, let us pray so we can get off the lines. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this night. We thank you for the opportunity to have come before you in the stead of our pastor and to keep the word going forth, Lord, and letting it know, letting us know by all of this that it does not take anyone in particular to spread the word of Jesus Christ as long as you believe and have the Holy Spirit living in you and you speak the words that Jesus Christ is given to the Holy Spirit to you that you speak out to the world. Keep our Father lifted up. Do the right thing. Be obedient to his word and the rewards you will get in heaven um, such that you will never, ever, ever be able to explain. Have the joy in your life and in your soul that when people look upon you, they can say, I want some of whatever they have over there. Because I see that they smile and have joy all the time. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I thank each and every one of you on the line. God bless your families. God bless everyone that you come in contact with. And keep them being aware of the fact that the Holy Spirit is in you. And that Jesus Christ is Lord and God is alive. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 Have a good one, everybody. Good night, everybody.